Welcome back. Final segment of Gold and Black Live. Brian is still here. He loves being here, so it was hard to, you Love know. Love it. Loves I do it. this all day, every Loves day. it. Um, we're going to talk about football and football recruiting. Let's start with football recruiting. Obviously, another big week. They're all big weekends. Let's be real. They're mm -hmm. all big weekends. Another big recruiting official visit weekend coming up. Shoot, there might be people coming in right now. I don't even know. Friday afternoon. Maybe they're rolling in from wherever they're rolling in. Offensive line is going to be a discussion until February 3rd. Mm -hmm. Is that not true? Mm -hmm. and, uh, no, there that's was very true. Another, another decommitment officially this week. I think that's right. I'm getting my yeah. timeline confused. Yeah. Um, so Powell and Campbell are now out. Um, Neil is the only one that they have committed, but he Jaylen is Neil. But now... he can't come until the fall now. He right. was supposed to come mid-year. Can't come mid-year, so now he's coming in the fall. Provided he does sign with Purdue. Provided Purdue does take him. Uh, after his situation changed. He says they will. I have no reason to believe they won't, but they are recruiting other junior college offensive linemen too, so you never know. Purdue evaluated him very quickly because yeah. they had to get a guy mid-year, so they basically recruited him for four days, signed him because he was a mid-year guy, and then he wasn't a mid-year guy, so now <laughs> they're not quite getting what they recruited in the first place. I laugh so, at that. I shouldn't laugh, but it just kind of seems like... It's unfortunate. Yeah. It's... It is unfortunate, yeah. Uh, for everybody. It's unfortunate for Jalen Neal. It's unfortunate yeah. for Purdue. It's, but that's sort of the situation they were in. I thought it was interesting. They only had one junior college mid-year offensive tackle in for a visit before the mid-year signing date. And if you needed mm -hmm. one, I wonder why there weren't more coming in for visits. Yeah. Do we know how many offensive linemen are going to be here this weekend? I know chance? only one. Um, Grant Hermans from New Mexico was just offered yesterday um, or the day before, something like that. Mm. Good chance – they get him probably at some point. It's down to Purdue and Hawaii. He's still looking at maybe a preferred walk-on deal at Baylor. Hmm. But I would have to think a Big Ten scholarship offer for a guy who wants to study engineering is going to be pretty hard oh, to turn wow, down. Yeah, yeah it's that, that's, that has to be a deal where as long as Purdue does a good job on the visit, which Purdue does do a good job on visits. They do a really good job on hmm. visits. I would have to think Purdue's going to have a good chance too. It's just really interesting. That. That, I'm sorry. Um, knowing what Purdue lost up front, obviously, with Kugler and, and David Hedlund, and then wondering how that's going to shake out next season. That's obviously why this is a, such a big deal, that right. they need help, because they need help right now. Yeah. Um, I, I, I still believe that Kirk Barron is going to be, you know, the starting center when spring ball starts in, in March. Um, I think, you know, Sermon wants to play tackle. I don't know how much say he's going to really get in that, mm -hmm. but um, obviously he practiced some at center over the last year, but but he's a tackle in his mind and, you know, played there, started there. Yeah. And Martise Patterson then probably is your other tackle, but he needs to get better conditioned, mm -hmm. you know, all those things. So, I mean, that's that's a reason why it's kind of an issue right. is you, you need guys in right. right now. Yeah. I mean. Right. Well, just, the other part of it, too, is that when you recruit, you recruit for the short term and especially the long term. Right. And this has been like two or three recruiting classes now where Purdue's been looking for junior college offensive tackles, yeah. and you don't recruit junior college offensive tackles to play two years from now. You recruit them to right. play now. And it was really important for Purdue to get help now, but also get some young players in the program to develop that you really like mm -hmm. so you don't have to be looking for junior college offensive tackles every year. Because right. conventional wisdom in football says JUCOs take a year to get acclimated. And right. you always, can't always count on these guys. You, and they're hard to get because the good ones have everybody recruiting them. Mm -hmm. The mid-year ones, especially, which are the ideal ones, have everybody recruiting them. So right. you really need to get that – you really need to get your backfill stabilized too uh, and, you know, stop putting Band-Aids on things. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously the goal with needing a bunch of offensive linemen in this class. They really like Dylan Powell. They really like Luke Campbell. They got some of their A-list guys there. Some things happened with some other schools getting involved with them. The coaching carousel was not kind to Purdue there. And then Jim Bridge leaves at the absolute worst possible time for this. Mm -hmm. Purdue loses both of them, and now they have to go find some guys. I just shake my head because it's a tough situation to be in. When you only have, you know, two weeks or, what is it, yeah. like 12 days until signing yeah. day or whatever it is? Well, I it's mean, a tough spot to be in, no question. Whew. Yeah. Uh, any other recruiting news football-wise that you want to share? Uh, That's a very non-specific question because I don't know. Just kind of looking at things from here on out, not really sure how many scholarships they have to give because mm. th th that's always a moving target. Um, there are definitely some guys who are not coming back that we know of. I mean, obviously Austin yeah. Appleby, but I've heard Jonathan Curry also won't be back. Matt Burke is not coming back. There is another guy that I'm forgetting that's not coming back. So that's at least four. Yeah, um, so that's always a moving target. I know they recruited Jackson Anthrop. 
not knowing what their situation mm -hmm. is. I know you've got some moving targets academically in this class, too. I know Terrence Landers is going to have to get some things done academically. Mm -hmm. I know Josh Hayes is going to have to get some things done academically. So it's not just a matter of how many players you take here, but also how many players you actually end up with. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll determine where your numbers are. If Purdue's got space for Jackson Anthem to get an immediate scholarship, he will get one. If not, his scholarship will take effect uh, next January. So uh, mm -hmm. Purdue's you know, trying to strike that balance with its numbers, too. But yeah. they got to get some offensive linemen. They need no another defensive end. They might be poking around running backs and tight ends a little bit now. Mm -hmm. uh, they they've got their quarterback, obviously. So now right. it's just kind of getting some more linemen. In regards to Jackson Anthrop, I'm hoping to, to speak with Danny Anthrop, who will be playing in the East-West Shrine game on Saturday along with Robert Kugler and Anthony Brown. Um, so I will try to get Danny's thoughts on Jackson next week, hopefully early. Danny's usually pretty good at calling me back. So I feel pretty confident. He's a good kid. That we'll have something. Um, good young man, yeah. I should say. He, I, it makes me sound like a really old person. <laughs> when I say he's a good kid. Uh, he's Frankie, a good kid, that one. I'm, I'm going to pat him on the head and <laughs> scruff his hair next time he comes in here. Um, Frankie Williams is also playing an all-star game this weekend. Uh, the NFLPA Bowl, which is getting like legit coverage on ESPN and stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that until I was on the Twitter and trying to find out, oh, hey, you know, are there stories? And I'm like, wow, they're having like practices on TV and it's in California. That one seems pretty cool. People watch football whenever football is on TV. Yeah. I think I history think, has shown us that. But it doesn't matter what the football is. <laughs> if it's football and it's on TV, people will watch it. So I think they're just looking for reasons to put football on television. I think both of those games are in the afternoon. I believe 4 o'clock. Oh, I think the NFLPA is on NFL Network at 4. I'm not sure where the East-West Shrine game is. But you don't even have to watch it. Just come back to Golden Black. And I'll tell you what happened. Yeah, don't watch it. Just don't watch it. Side. All you want to know is what they say about how the experience was anyways, right? Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's real quickly here. We've got about five minutes or so. The assistant coach search, Purdue, Brian mentioned Jim Bridge. Jafar Williams, the running backs coach, left for Rutgers as well. So they need to fill two spots. Um, I honestly haven't heard too much about that, but I know that we put some stuff in, in plate. I don't know if we want to divulge what we said in Boiling Over, but um, we honestly really just haven't heard too much, you know, kind of hearing names here and there, but um, I think it'll be interesting to see what they do. I, my kind of preference is getting a guy who's coached before, like on teams and stuff, and instead of like, you know, maybe a really young mm -hmm. guy who hasn't done too much. But, um, but we'll see what yeah. direction they go kind of with those, those openings. There's something to be said for energy, I agree. too. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes... We'll when you get these guys, I'm not generalizing about guys who've been hired or anything, but sometimes when you get guys who just need jobs and maybe on the, they're on the back end of their career, mm -hmm. you know, how invested are they? How right. much of themselves are they going to put into this? Mm -hmm. are, are they just kind of hanging on? And right now, Purdue needs energy. Purdue needs a collective personality. They need a collective work ethic. I'm not saying that people haven't been working, but they need something to set them apart. Mm -hmm. Uh, to their players, to make a difference with players in the program now, to make a difference in recruiting, to kind of set Purdue apart mm -hmm. a little bit because Purdue's got to work its way out of this. Purdue's yeah. got to recruit its way out of this. Purdue's got to coach its way out of this. Mm -hmm. and that's the only way out of this right now. We probably we haven't been able to speak with any of the three new hires yet. Obviously, they've been pretty busy uh, on the road recruiting, but hopefully once signing day is done next week. Is that next week? No, two weeks from now. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just go where <laughs> you guys tell me. He's the worst guy with like days. <laughs> He's like, what's today? Um, then we'll hopefully be able to sit down with, with those guys and then also speak with Daryl Hazel again and um, maybe Morgan Burke if we get a chance to do that. Uh, just real quickly, too, I had put on the board earlier this week, I've been kind of requesting the contracts um, and, and got the, uh, the assistant coaches who are, who are being retained, at least for now, that we know of. Um, Jafar, Jafar was actually on the list that I got, but he's obviously not around anymore. But, you know, Marcus Freeman gets a $50,000 raise. Tafer Johnson and Jared Parker get $25,000 increases. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because this salary pool is increasing. Um, obviously, they need to fill two more spots here, but as it sits right now, um, they're at about $2 million for these assistant coaches. And, and if they would pay these two new guys the same as they paid Bridge and, and Williams, they'd be about 2.4 right now. And that is considerably more mm -hmm. than when Daryl came in in 2013. The, the salary pool was 1.81. So we're talking about 2.4, so it's almost 600000 potentially, you know, over four years. I will be asking where that money is coming from whenever I'm ready to talk to somebody. But just interesting. I mean, That's it's... It's, it's an interesting dynamic, though, because, you know, everybody talks about you got to pay to get good coaches, 
but then it's like that still applies even when you're not having success. I, you know, it's I, just kind of different. I will say this. Purdue wants to show a commitment to football, yes. not just to its current guys, but if it ever comes to a situation where, you know, Purdue's got to go out and hire somebody else, you've got this training center in place, mm -hmm. you've got this increased salary pool, you're a better job than you were two years ago. Yep. Just saying. Oh, I don't disagree. I love that, the sports performance complex or whatever Dwayne that said training, it's called. That, that thing yeah, is big time. I mean, they yeah. have, if that thing materializes like everything that's been Both shown to us, that thing is absolutely, that's a game changer for Purdue. And Dwayne Carlisle talked about that earlier on yeah. segment one. So if you missed him, we'll have a replay up later today. But thanks to Brian, wrap this up here. Um, thanks, like I said, thanks to Dwayne, Purdue's Director of Sports Performance. Um, and also thank you to, to our sponsors again, Hilton Garden Inn, when tomorrow is a big day, stay at HGI tonight. That's the Hilton Garden Inn at Wabash Landing. Triple X Family Restaurants, a Purdue tradition since 1929. Basham Reynolds, uh, John Basham and his folks are taking rentals for the 2016-2017 school year. And of course, Trent Johnson, you can reach Trent at trentismyagent.com. Also, all the folks who help run this show behind the scenes that you don't see, thank you so much to Gordon, Chris, and Allie, and we will be back next week. Alan will probably be here talking about Rick Mount. Don't miss that. We'll see you next time on Golden Black Live. <laughs>